Okay, the y-axis is number of pupils. And the x-axis is number of siblings that they have. So they did some research into the number of siblings. And they want you to calculate, uh, to first find out how many people took part in the investigation. Well, we just add up all the number of frequencies. So what, if, we could, if we wanted to, we could actually turn this into a frequency table. But we can just look at how many people did they have in their investigation by looking at the numbers on the graph. There are three people who had zero siblings. So we asked three people there. We added, asked 15 here. There was 15 who had nine, who had one sibling. And then nine who had two, four who had three, two who had four, zero who had five, and two who had six. So if we add all of those um, numbers together, we get 35. So we've investigated 35 people and asked them how many siblings do they have. Then we would like to calculate the average and the median. So the mean and the median. The mean we get by taking each of these years, so we had three people who had zero siblings. So we multiply the number of people by the number of siblings is the easiest way to do this. Then we had 15 people who had one. We had nine people who had two. Four people who had three siblings. And we add all these numbers together. Um, and then we had two people who had four siblings and zero who had five and six that had two. We add all of those frequencies together, which age they had and how many there were, and divide by the number of pupils that we added, asked in our investigation. So we divide by 35. If we'd written this as a frequency table, we would have had this in this column here, where we'd have had number of siblings, 0, 1, 2, 3, and then we'd have said how many were there, the frequency, 3, 15, and then what we'd have done in this column is we'd have had the number of si siblings times the frequency, frequency times siblings, and we'd have got these numbers here, 0 times 3 is 0, 15 times 1 is 15. But we don't need to do a frequency table. But if you need to, sometimes they can say, make a frequency table of this data. And there are several show me's on how to make a frequency table. So then we uh, get all these numbers together. Three zeros are zero, plus 15, plus nine twos are 18, four threes are 12, four twos are eight, six twos are 12. Add all of those numbers together and divide by 35. It will give you. 65 divided by 35, which when you work, you can use a calculator for that, you get 1.9. So there are 1.9 siblings in the whole number that we've investigated here. Class, if we say it's a class. Then it says the median. What's the easiest way of getting the median? Well, what I like to do when it's all put up here on a graph I actually go from either side, the lowest number and the, and the highest number, and cancel and see which number I get in the middle. So we know that we can get the median by putting up a really long list of all the different numbers that we have. Um, that we put up, how many zeros did we have? One, two, three, and then 15 ones. And this takes forever. So I don't like to do it like this unless I really have to. So what I do is I go from the extreme. I say, I've got two siblings here at six. I'll cancel them with two of my zeros. Then I've got 15 ones here and one left over from here. So that's 16. So if I go back 16 places, here's two places back. Here's four places back. That would give me six. And here's nine. That would give me 15 places back. So I would be able to cancel 15 places here, but I, already, I had 16 here. So what is my average going to be? It's actually going to be one left on, on one sibling, because I had 16 to the left and only 15 to the right. So my middle number has to be a 1. So I can just use my graph to actually look up what the median is. 
trying to find the middle number. I'll explain that one one more time so we do it a little bit slower, take a different number here. I'm cancelling these two zeros on this side with these sixes on this side. So I'm going from my left hand and my right hand all the time. I've got one zero left over, so I will cancel it against one of my fours, giving me one four left over. I will cancel one of my fours against one of my ones. And then I will cancel my four threes against four of my 15 here. So I'm now taking away one and I'm taking away the four threes and I'm even going to take away all four nines from my 15. I, if I take away 15 minus 1 minus 4 minus 9 that will be the same as 15 minus 14 which will give me 1. So I'm going to have one number left over at the top here and it's going to be a number 1. If it had been two numbers left over, that there was a 1 and a 2, I'd have had to take the average of those two numbers. So remember, when you're taking the mean, if you get two numbers, you add the two numbers and divide by 2 if you get uh, the median, if you get two numbers in your median. So two numbers in your median, you always have to take an average. But if you get a mode number, you know, Tupvada, where you get three or two different mode numbers, you never take the average of a mode number. The most frequently occurring number you say could have been a, um, a 3 and a 7. You always answer mode numbers or Tupfeda with all the numbers that have the same frequency, the, the highest frequency. But in this particular question, the mode, the highest frequency is 15. The mode would have been um, number 1, that there were 15 ones. So the highest frequency is one sibling. And we say